Greetings, members, one and all of the Salivation Nation. We are here live, and it's a Friday night. Not just any Friday night. It's just a normal Friday night. There's nothing going on here. Nothing to see here. Move along. No, I'm just teasing. We have Jake Haugen here from Provident Metals. Official. He even has the shirt to prove it. There it is, folks. Yes, indeed. And uh, Jake answered our call to all bullion dealers. And uh, he is here to... Um, answer some questions from uh, me and from you. And we have a couple of ground rules before we begin to get to, to, get to know Jake and Provident Metals a little better. And the first ground rule is that if you have a question, and we hope you do have a question, um, is to type three. That's right, count them three. Just like this, let me, let me do it here, just a second here. Asterisk, that's the shift eight key three asterisks before your question. That way we can see it and we'll know that it is for Jake from Provident Metals. So that's the first rule, the most important rule, because we want to get as many questions answered as possible. Um, and uh, But don't ask the question before um, I give the instruction to start asking the questions, if that makes sense. We're going to ask a couple of questions and have a discussion here with Jake, and then we're going to move on to the, uh, to the viewer questions. So Keep that in mind. And then the next thing, uh, the next rule is just to be respectful. You know, um, uh, this is uh, this is my guest and um, and I think that we should treat him with respect. We can have fun just as we normally do. It's OK to joke around. And heck, I might even do a little slurping for you guys. I saw some people calling calling out for that. So, yes. And then a little slurping. We got to keep the slurping up for the for the folks here. And hey, uh, let, let, let me just let me just butt in here real quick. Here. I, I was I was on your page earlier today, and I saw that you're ridiculously close to seventeen thousand. I've been wow. watching I've been watching your stuff since you were at like a, a, you know ten thousand, eleven thousand, maybe even nine thousand. I don't know. Um, so if you're watching this and you haven't subscribed, subscribe. Let's get Sal over seventeen k. Oh on. man, that would be great. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, that would be cool. <laughs> yes, indeed. Thank you very much. Yes, we're getting pretty close there. And um, also, so yes, yeah, so so definitely save those um, uh, those questions. And when you do ask a question, just remember, just remember three asterisks before the question, and that way we can catch it. And we're both going to try to get as many questions answered as possible. And uh, and even if they're even if it's something um, you know critical, we, you know, we want to be open and transparent here. And uh, but uh, but at the same time, be respectful. That's what we ask. Those are really the only two rules. And other than the normal rules of the, of the normal live streams, we want to keep it pretty open and, uh, and and the like. So let's begin. So, Jake, welcome. Thank you again, sir. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thanks for reaching out. Um, thanks for what you do for the community. I, I really enjoyed watching your stuff over the over the years. And um, obviously, the love that you give us here, I, we, we definitely appreciate it when people recognize some of the things that we're trying to do with the with the different series or any of the special releases and stuff so man i can't thank you enough um i think uh i i really think that you know the contribution and the passion that you have for the community is 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 awesome i wish i wish that we would have started doing this earlier you know i've had this thought in my head like man i've got to start talking with sal a little bit and so i'm glad that you made the uh you made the offer and um, ho hopefully I was the first one to accept. So thanks for having me, man. I really yes, you were definitely. And, and thank you for that. And, uh, and that's the thing I, I will say that it's good to see, uh, when, uh, when, uh, bullion dealers and those who sell to many of us in the community do make effort mm -hmm. to interact with the uh, precious metals community here on YouTube, because YouTube really is growing as a platform. Um, and, uh, it's pretty amazing to see. And I think it's a great opportunity for, uh, um, um, fans and uh, bullion dealers to get together and understand each other better and understand where things are and understand about how businesses run in the precious metals markets. And uh, so with that being said, um, just give us a little background on Provident Metals as a company and, um, and kind of what got you started and what kind of separates you from some of the other bullion dealers out there. Wow. That's a, that, when you ask that, you're asking the story of my life, honestly. And so I'm not going to tell you the story of my life. Don't tune out now. Just, um, uh, man, we Provident, if I look at where Provident started, um, it, literally it started for me when I was six or seven years old uh, with uh, 
hanging out with my grandma. I remember my, my grandma Gladdy, when I would go visit her on the weekends, I would always clean up her penny. So I don't know if you guys have ever done that. Hit, hit a hit a like or a thumb up or whatever. If you've ever taken like ketchup and put pennies in it and cleaned them, uh, you know, I did, I provided that service free of charge to my grandmother when I was young and hung out in her living room. I would clean up all of her pennies for her. And so that's one of my fond memories, kind of like my first introduction to like, you know, paying attention to coins and messing around with them and whatnot. And so, um, you know, beyond, beyond that, you know, uh, when I was young, I used to, uh, I used to, I, I come from the Midwest, come from Minnesota and I, I lived in a, a smallish town, about 50,000 people and, uh, lived pretty close to a recycling plant. And so that was, that was kind of ingrained in me pretty early on. Like, Hey, this metal is worth money. I used to collect aluminum cans and, uh, believe it or not, I collected glass, uh, from wow. the local, uh, VFW down the road. I would go dumpster diving for their glass, believe it or not. And, uh, used to get paid out a half a penny a pound on the glass. <laughs> right. Wow. You were glass before glass stingle was a thing. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, it, you know, it's it's always it's always been a part of a part of, you know, what I've been about, whether I knew it or not, whether I knew it was coming coming uh, at me or not. When I was when I was 18, wasn't sure what I was gonna do with, with myself and I went um, you know, I, I had a uh, opportunity to play to play football but I, I wasn't so interested in the school part of uh, playing football. I was more interested in the playing football part. And so I went out and I just got a job. Um, I worked for one of the biggest coin dealers in the, in the Midwest. And uh, that, that was, you know, that was baptism by fire, learning about coins sure. there. And so, I mean, really that's my background. Provident right now, you know, we sell, we sell a lot of bullion. Um, we sell gold, silver, platinum, palladium, all that stuff, even copper. Um, but you know, my, my roots are definitely in numismatics, collectibles. Sure. Um, you know, I, I bought my first coin when I was nine years old. I used to deliver newspapers to a uh, to a coin shop, and when I would go in there and deliver the newspaper, obviously, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be looking at all the coins, and it was probably my my least efficient stop delivering newspapers. But I did buy my first coin, a piece dollar there. I paid four bucks for it. So wow, that tells you how long ago that was. <laughs> Man. Yeah, but um, you know, as 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 the years went on, we you know, me and a couple of buddies, we started a wholesale company where we were buying um, buying rare coins and, and metals and whatnot and selling them uh, to other dealers. And so, uh, one of our biggest uh, customers, I was responsible for selling a lot of our our product. One of our biggest customers um, is a, a precious metals retailer, and we, you know that kind of gave us the transparency. Hey, we're, we're selling the stuff to these guys for that. And they're selling it for that. And we looked at it and said, well, you know, maybe there's, maybe there's an opportunity for us to, to serve a market here. Um, and so, I mean, we, we hired, we hired the right guys uh, to build out the website for us. And, uh, and we launched Provident Metals. That was December, uh, December 15th of uh, man, 2009, December 15th, wow. 2009 is when we went live. Wow. Yeah, you know, and and that's really a, a long time in in the world of internet companies and and uh, and and the like. So that's that's a that's a long time to to be in business online for sure. It seems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, we and we we de like I said, we it it was uh, learning as we go. We had a you know we had a passion for for coins and and metals, and you know we we felt like the internet was the next big thing, right? I mean, right. You know, I don't know, nine. It wasn't. It wasn't. Uh, in, in its infancy per se, as it was, let's say in 95, 96, but it, you know, e-commerce, there, there wasn't a lot of people doing e-commerce for precious metals at that time. Exactly. And so, yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's been, it's been a great almost nine years now. We'll have to check and see what the Wayback machine has for Provident Metals back then. We, would do, that. we do that occasionally and it's right. pretty, pretty cool to see, like, we don't even remember the different iterations. I think we're on the fourth, the fourth major, iteration of provident you know and so um yeah it's 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 been a it's been a ton of fun so you guys you know most of us a lot of us get the emails um which i, I love how they're kind of interjected with some humor in there too but but so you there's there's a lot of sales you guys have uh um, almost continually some sale um here uh, from time to time but uh also one thing that something a lot of people may not know is you guys offer military discounts too Yep. Yep. That's something that we, 
Um, you know, we, we don't, we don't advertise. Uh, it's something that we started years ago and kind of just didn't really think about it. Like, yeah, this is a no brainer. We should definitely, uh, do the, do the best we can for our military friends, the people, I mean, what can we do to, to like pay respect, to honor, uh, their sacrifice. And I mean, it, it's, it's our way. It's, it's obviously there, we can never repay that, you know. Right, I, right. Well, I think that's an awesome gesture. Right? My family, you know, one of our one of our family stories is uh, my grandfather. I actually have the news clipping. I, I I kind of enjoy genealogy at an amateurish level. Sure. Uh, have a um, I have a news clipping of my grandfather and grandmother being married in uh in oh man way back when I don't quite know the year, but uh, my grandparents got married and eight days later he shipped off to wow. the army, you know? And so that's, that's, that's part of, part of who my family is. And, you know, I, I think, you know, you're, you're, be, you're being silly if you don't recognize that the military has touched, you know, has served your family in some way. And so, yeah, it's, it's a little thing we offer it. It's not a automated thing. You, you have to call in to get the military discount. So, um, but uh, yeah, just our little way of giving back, you know, been doing it for years. We don't talk about it. Probably won't talk about it outside of stuff like this. Um, we won't send emails out and stuff like that. Right, but, right. Yeah, word gets out there. We have a, it's a pretty right. sizable group. Yeah, yeah. I think, well, I think that's honorable and, and, uh, I'm, um, it's, I'm so happy that, that you guys do that. That's, that's great. A great service for sure. Cause I think it's a good nod to the veterans. Um, well, very cool. So, so as far as the years that you've been in business, what's some of the biggest changes you've seen, um, in your nine years now being in business? Oh man, that's a good question. Uh, there, there, there are so many changes, you know, we're always trying to, trying to, uh, be, to respond to the market, not necessarily react to it, you know, be respond to it, try to serve the market the best we can. Um, I'll give you one example, uh, probably, probably back in, uh, 2011, 2012, uh, we, we had a really, really big business in copper bullion, right. You know, copper bullion, uh, at, at its height was just, it was, it was unreal. And, and so, you know, we, we can't really uh, sell people 22 cents or however much 25 cents of copper right. uh, for, for anywhere close to spot because exactly. there's application that goes into it and all that kind of stuff. But we still ended up, we sold tons and tons and tons of copper. That wow. business, is, that business has waned. So that's, that's been a big shift. And I think I would attribute part of that to the fact that, um, Silver is much lower in comparison to copper. I mean, that's back when silver was thirty dollars. You right. know, low thirties. Okay, I can buy this cool design. You know, Zombucks come to mind in twenty fourteen. I can buy this cool design in uh, in in silver for thirty three bucks, or I can get you know twenty of them. Right. For, uh, you know, for for twenty bucks, thirty bucks, whatever it is in copper. And you know, if 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 you're on kind of a tight budget, yeah, it's 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 a way to kind of like bring the collector into it. You know. Sure. So, yeah, I mean, that, that's one example. Another example is just the, the, the market definitely um, is, appears to be more saturated with product. Right. You know, just the, the options out there to the collector as well as the bullion stacker. And so in my mind, I look at those um, as two different, two different customers. And I think, I think we all kind of blur the line back and forth. Sometimes we're acting as a collector. Sometimes we're acting as a, uh, as a bullion stacker. And so, um, you know, we're, we're all, we're all guilty of that at some point going off plan. Right. Yeah. I, I think if you love this, you're, you're going to see something that's going to speak to you and, and, and you're going to act on it. But yeah, there's a, there are a lot of, um, a lot more choices for the, for the collector out there. And I know you highlight a lot of that in your channel for sure. Um, you, you bring stuff to my attention that I've never heard of. Um, so my, my immediate thought is wh whoever's making this is not doing a good job of marketing it because I haven't heard of it yet. <laughs> you right. know? Yeah. And we do our best to pay attention, but you know, we get served, we get served a lot of stuff. Um, and, and we just have to look at our customer base and say, you know, we, we think that this is that this, this will sell or it won't. Obviously we can't carry stuff that won't sell. Um, and, and we, we, we've built a certain, I don't know, avatar, if you will, a certain type of person that, that likes to shop at Provident over the years. And, um, it, it's, it's kind of native to me and, and to our other founders. And it's, you know, it's, it's who we've, we've enjoyed serving for, you know, nearly a decade now. Sure. Right. Well, and, uh, and just as a reminder folks, we will get to your questions, but hold off on the questions. Uh, 
for now, but we're going to get to them very soon. Just uh, hang on. But uh, um, Jake, that leads me to my next question because I think of all the uh, bullion dealers that I'm aware of, I believe Provident Metals has been the most proactive in, in their exclusive series. In other words, Provident conceived and designed series such as the very, very successful Zombux yep. series. And so can you kind of give some insight on on what on the marketing aspect of say, you know, because obviously that was a huge hit. You know, some people were speculating about a Zombux 2 or Zombux World series like like imagine, imagine the Britannia as a Zombuck, or or, right. or 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 imagine the um, the Four Harmonic as a, as a Zombuck. You know, there's different things that come to mind. But what what take us through that process of starting a new series? The 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 the, the latest series we have is behind you. The concept art for the dragons, and yeah. so take us through some of that. Well, uh, you know, it, every series is, uh, yeah, I mean, none of this is, is done by one person. This, like, what, what it takes to bring a series to life takes way more people than, than you could imagine and way more, way more decisions and, and, and meetings and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, the, the Zombux for us, like I, like I said earlier, you know, we, we come from like a collector background. And so that, that, uh, I remember the conversation. I was I was I was on a road trip with my family. I was on vacation. I called up I called up uh, one of our other people and said, "Hey, why has nobody done a zombie uh, uh, a zombie coin yet or a zombie round yet?" I, I just and I think it was like in the second or you know you guys can do the math, but let's say it was like the third season of The Walking Dead. So we're talking like the height of The Walking Dead, and no one has touched the subject matter. Right. Yeah. Right. And so, you know, I mean, you, you do a little brainstorming, you make some phone calls back and forth, like, say, okay, we, we have a, we have a winner here, you know, uh, for us, I mean, it, you know, yeah. We, oh yeah, we did zero market testing before we launched it. Um, and, and so, you know, like, like the, the, the story about the, about the dragon series, you know, the, the dragon series, I've, I've been racking my brain for, you know, two years, three years on and off because Believe me, if, if you thought, hey, when's the next Zombuck? Are you guys going to do another Zombuck series? Every time you think it, I'm probably getting an email right. asking me about it. And yeah, so we probably have got an email about this. Kalonic Stacker thinks that this round, the Fortitude round, is going to be the, the currency of the apocalypse. Yeah. And so if you made a, a zombified version of the Fortitude round, oh, then, yeah. then you could define it as a dead cat bounce. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Oh geez. That, was yeah, that, you know, that that def, that looks laser cut. Yeah, I think some of it was. I think the, yeah, the, 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 the thing there was a laser cut. Um that's definitely laser cut to get that to get that pattern on there. Yeah. What are what are the uh uh so it's one point seven five ounces. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of a. But anyways, I just having a little fun with you there. But anyway, so back to your back to your thing on the on the. Yeah, that's that was a winner, and and you did the Hercules or the um. Yeah. What was that? What was that? That was a Hercules series, and they had the ten ounce round, and then you had the uh, the Apocalypse series. Yeah, yeah. Well, we had yeah we we had the the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse Four series. Apocalypse, yes. Yep, and so that's kind of in the that's kind of in the in the same vein as like the Zombux, you know, the whole apocalypse. Some people say negative stuff doesn't sell, right? right. And and in 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 some ways, yeah. I mean, it's it's good. You're not going to make everyone happy every single time with a release. Right. You, you're just you're just doing your best to say like, what would I think would be cool, right? And right. So, a lot of this, like this dragon series that we launched, this is a series that I've been wanting to do for years. Yeah. Uh, and where, where it comes from is me researching uh, Zombux. So I, I'm telling you right now, if, if, if I can make it make sense, the next Zombux series is, is going to be <clears throat> uh, kind of a marriage between dragons and, and Zombux in the way that, you know, we're, we're looking at dragons from around the world in this series. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, I just got over a cold, so if I cough, oh, yeah, yeah, no worries, bless you. Uh, but the um, but the the way I came about the dragon series was by uh, researching zombies, and there are zombie myths all over the world. And so I'm okay. How can we make this make sense? Is there a is there? I mean, I'm 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 from Minnesota, so you know I'm a Viking. So yeah. I'm a Viking zombie. It's called the Draugr, right? And th th for those of you that watch uh, Game of Thrones, you know what a you know what a Draugr is. I think it's on that show. I don't watch it. 
it's yeah. outdated, so I don't watch it, right? The Night King, they're the, the dead. The, uh, the, there's a different, their zombies are called something else, I forget. But anyways, but yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, I mean, that's, that's where the dragons came from. You know, what, what, you know, I've, I've wanted to do um, a mythological type series, let's say. And so, you know, I came upon dragons. There are dragon myths all over the world. Like right. it's, it's incredible. It's incredible. And I mean, that's the kind of stuff that I love. Like, can we get, can we get an artist that can, that can execute on something uh, and, and make it look good and, you know, something that I would want to buy. And so, right. Yeah, we've been wrong self-referencing before. What one that come one that comes to mind is uh, see, I'm forgetting about the American Wildlife series. Yeah. Oh yeah. That that series didn't do well. And believe it or not, the mintages are crazy small on those. Like you're talking ten thousand ounces. Right. You know? And they were they were they were designed and sculpted by a former US mint uh, sculptor, Tom Rogers. Right, right. It just didn't do well, you know. Right. Um, Four Horsemen was an okay series. Obviously Zombux. You know, that, that was lightning in a bottle because, you know, like we talked about earlier, there was nothing else. There, there wasn't a lot of competition out there. Then you have the high relief two ounce stuff, which is incredible. The, oh, the yeah. Yep. Egyptian yep. God series. The, yeah. Yeah. That wasn't even planned to be a series. You know, we at least we, we released the uh, Cleopatra two ounce silver round. Of course, Heidi Wasweet. Yeah. Uh, uh, she she does the, she does the art as well as the sculpting. So, you know, when I was talking earlier about, you know, it, taking a, a, a big crew of people to make, uh, to bring something to life. A lot of times, you know, you, you have your concept people that would be like me, let's say, you know, me or, uh, Joe, we, we come up with an idea where we say, we think this is a cool series. We, we toss it over to an artist and an artist, um, comes back with something and then it's, it just starts that process. So a lot of times the artist, the sketcher is different from the sculptor. Those are right. Two right. And then from there you have the manufacturer, right? right? So it's, it's not, it's definitely not the same person. Right. Um, but it, yeah, it's a ton of work and it's a risk every single time we release this. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. We, you know, nothing, nothing's on credit. It's all paid up front. And yeah. if something doesn't fly, we just, we just got to eat it, you know? Right. Well, I think it's fascinating because I don't know of any other, I may be speaking out of turn, but I don't know of any other dealer that has done it as much as you have taken that chance yeah. with the new series. Yeah, so. I don't think so. And you know, the, 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 the kind of uh, maybe unintended consequence of this is that, you know, we've, we've provided people with two ways to win when it comes to bullion. So let me give you an example. When, when we first started selling Zombux, um, you know, yeah, we were selling them for $3 over spot where you could get a normal one ounce round for, let's say a buck over spot, right? We're selling these for $3 over spot because we, we have 90 days to sell this. We have to re recoup our development cost. Sure. Yeah. You know, we have to pay to ship it. We ship for free. All that. I mean, there's all this cost. And of course we get, we have to make some money on this thing. And right. so and there are three bucks over spot, which I think at the time was, you know, spot was $21 silver, $22 silver. So you're looking at 25 bucks. Um, for the longest time, uh, there are a number of the Zombux that, despite what the silver market has done are worth more than what our customers paid for them. And that's something that, you know, we, we couldn't say like, Oh, we thought of that. We knew that was going to happen. You know, that would be I don't know, pretentious or whatever. Um, but yeah, I mean, we love doing that. we love the fact that, you know, we provided some value that the market still sees value in and can benefit the people that have been loyal to us. Right. And, you know, one of the things that came up in one of our meetings was the um, you mentioned the apocalypse series. Yeah. The Horseman of the Apocalypse, one ounce copper. Uh, let's see, it was it's the white horse. Right. So the one ounce copper round that we sold for I think a buck fifty. They yeah. go routinely between fifteen and twenty dollars on eBay right now. Wow. So I see that kind of stuff and I'm just like, yes, like someone cares about this. Someone cares about it enough. Maybe someone missed the boat, didn't know right. about us. Yeah. Uh, and wasn't able to get it. So yeah, I mean, we, we, I don't we, need to get a 10 ounce bar from that series. That's the only spot uh, missing on my box, but yeah, it, it's a great series for sure. Yeah, that's, uh, believe it or not, that's a, that's a crazy hard bar um, to produce just because of the level of detail. I mean, we, sure. you know, it's kind of one of those things. We, we announced that we were going to make that 10 ounce before, bar before we had, had even, uh, you know, cut dies or anything. Oh, wow. And so like we knew we had to back it up. And so, yeah, it took a little bit longer to bring the market than we hoped, but we wanted to get it right. And so thankfully the people at Highland, you know, Highland Mint produces that for us right. they went through a couple of different iterations and, and hung in there with us. And so, yeah, so now that bar is, is out there and it's in living color. So, yeah.
Well, that's great. Well, that, that leads me. In fact, the, the audience is getting a little uh, edgy here. Uh -oh. They want to ask their question. So I'm going to ask one last question, question before we move to the, uh, to the yeah. four questions. Um, so if you've asked a question before, you'll have to ask it again. But, but hold off. Don't do it yet. I'm going to ask one, one last question here. And that is what, what I think some will probably ask. And that is, um, as a bullion dealer, if, if if sometimes when these bullion dealers put out these sales, um, you know, and and we see all these sales coming out for 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 buy silver at this much closer spot or gold or this much closer spot, it's like they seem to know something that we don't as far as spot price and where it's going. Can you can you speak to that? Uh, yeah, <laughs> I've had many conversations with people face to face where they don't believe me. So. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to give my explanation, uh, to it. You can believe it or not. That's up, that's up to you. Um, bullion dealers hedge. And so we get this question a lot. You know, I, I bought, I bought, you had a sale at this price and now it's down 50 cents. You know, I feel duped or anything like that. Look, if, if we were, if we were, uh, playing the silver market and, and specking in silver, we wouldn't go through this terribly inefficient process of putting it in packages and small lots and shipping that out. We would be trading paper. Right. So what I'm, what I mean by hedging, uh, ho hopefully, do you think your audience understands hedging or is there a bunch of people that. Yeah. But you might want, you might want to just uh, speak. Yeah, to so, I mean, essentially, you know, we, 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 we sell silver uh, in the paper markets to counteract what's uh, what we have physically. And so our exposure um, to, to the market is zero. So in other words, we don't care if silver goes up a quarter, it goes down a quarter, it doesn't matter because either way, uh, we're, we're losing on one side of our, of our equation, we're gaining on the other. So let's say I'm selling silver at $20 today. Um, let's say I have 10,000 ounces of silver and physical in my vault. I'm gonna go and we're gonna, we're gonna short 10,000 ounces somewhere else, okay? I know you guys, some of you guys might not like that term short, but our goal is to get to zero exposure to where uh, if silver goes up a buck, yeah, we our inventory is all of a sudden worth ten thousand dollars more a buck an ounce. But you right. know that short that we had is now worth ten thousand less. Okay. And so you know what what we want in the bullion markets is we want we want the markets to move. You know, a sideways market doesn't do any of us good um, because what that means is that people you know people they have short attention spans. They're onto other things. There's plenty of other good investments out there right now. Right. Um, you know, a lot of people are investing in real estate right now. Of course, there's the whole crypto Bitcoin thing, yep. you know, which uh, I mean, to each his own. Right. Right. Very good. OK, cool. Well, and then one real quick before we go, the uh, DJ, DJ, DJ Gold or DG Gold or whatever. The, yeah. You want to speak to that real quick and then we'll take questions from the. Yeah, sure. So DG Gold is something that we launched just this this week. Uh, I think it was Tuesday. Uh, that we launched that project. What DG Gold is is um, it's it's four nines fine gold that's stored in the Royal Canadian Mint's vaults. Um, you're able to buy it through Provident Metals. We sell it at ten dollars over the spot price. You can buy as little as a thousandth of an ounce. And so, um, what I what I kind of equate that to, and here's here's two scenarios where DG Gold makes sense. Well, first off, it's 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 all um, blockchain ledger. So everyone, everyone that's involved understands and agrees who, who owns what metal and when they own it and how much they own at what rate and whatnot. Um, but a couple different scenarios or examples, let's say you're trying to buy a gram of gold. Okay, before DG Gold, your, your option is uh, to buy a one gram PAMP or a one gram Perth gold bar, something along those lines, right? And it, in order to, to get that delivered to you, you're gonna pay the minting and the assay card fee and all that, all that different kind of stuff. And let's say maybe your goal is, is to get 31 of those grams together to get a full ounce, right? Right. Um, you're going to, you're going to incur 30 times 12 to $15 in premium to get to that one ounce. And then you're going to have to sell them back to get a physical ounce in your hands, right? right. To get a, 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 a one ounce gold bar. Right. right. Um, when I look at that, it's terribly inefficient. Now, uh, in, if you were trying to, let's say your budget was that fifty dollars or roughly a gram worth monthly, you're gonna through DG Gold, your fee is essentially a penny per thousandth. Okay, okay. so to get a gram of gold, you're looking. I, I, if I'm doing the math right, it's like thirty cents. It's it's nothing. To right. Gold. Whereas to get that same gram delivered in your hands, now what you do is you 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 budget monthly where you're putting your fifty bucks in, and when you get to your announce, you convert it. 
You can right. work with Provident. You, uh, right now you have to call us in. Very soon you're going to be able to just sell it right there and convert it to that one ounce Pamp Gold Bar or the one ounce Perth Gold Bar at 25 to 30 bucks over spot. So now your, your premium that you're paying is, is, is considerably less than that other option, right? right. Right. The other, the other scenario where I think it makes a lot of sense is let's say you're trying to, you, you want to buy something that maybe doesn't exist yet, or maybe wearing a crunch. Let's say silver drops a bunch. Silver drops to $10 an ounce. Okay. And people are going crazy and I'm using silver and I'm saying silver because we are going to be offering the same thing in silver shortly, um, a, a silver option. Okay. And, and so let's, uh, let's say that you want to, um, uh, you want to buy silver eagles, but sil silver just dropped to 10 bucks. It's a, t it's a good time to get in on silver. You can lock in that spot price and not have to pay the premium uh, that we see in silver. If, if silver went down to $10, I would imagine silver eagle premiums would go to five, six, seven dollars probably. Right. So, uh, what you do is you buy the silver in DG gold. Uh, you wait for the premium to come down on silver eagles and then boom, you get your silver eagles at $2 and 50 cents or whatever the premium is when it's more reasonable. And right. In that crazy rush. Um, the, the the thing to remember is that this is actually like it's physical gold. This right. is not, this is not an ETF where you have a bunch of you know mining companies and their terrible balance sheets and mismanagement involved in metals moving up or down. As gold and silver moves up and down, the value of the DG gold moves up and down. So there's no there's no other craziness going on. Which is nice because they can they can cash out at Provident Metals and get what they want. They can it right. cover anything that you in your inventory, correct? Yep. Yep. And so that, that, that part's going to be automated right now. It's a little bit more, uh, it's a little bit more involved. You have to call our purchasing department right, uh, and, and, and deal with them. Uh, if you're just looking to sell your DG gold back, we buy it back at 10 bucks back a spot. So you look at a round turn is $20. We sell okay. it at 10 over, we buy it at 10 back, but if you're converting is that per ounce or is that per, yeah, per, per ounce? Yeah. To divide it down based off the weight. So if a half ounce would be $5. Yeah. Yep. So only if, you're, if you're going to, sorry, if you're going to convert it to product on the Provident website, you get paid bid spot. So okay. it's better than cashing out, let's say. Right. And part of that is because we, you know, we don't need to make money twice on it. Right. Like right, right. You know, if, if you're going to convert on our site, you know, we're going to be shipping you a physical product. You're a customer. That's what we want. You know, we want people to get physical bullion. Yeah, that's cool. I think that's that's a neat idea. That's probably the best, at least that I've heard, way that you can use the blockchain and that kind of technology uh, to be able to be able to uh, to eventually. Because eventually, we do want to hold it, you know. Because you know what they say: if you don't hold it, you don't own it. Correct. Yeah. Cool. Well, but, well, DG Gold's not for everybody. I mean, I, I see DG Gold as being something for you know. Everyone has that number where yeah. they're not comfortable keeping it, and keeping it like under their bed in the safe in the closet you know wherever you keep your metal everyone's got a number you know as high as we go so if you if, if you never hit that number maybe dg gold isn't for you but if you're there and and you and you you know it's it's kind of inefficient trading in and out of bullion this provides you more flexibility more responsiveness less labor i mean there's a bunch of advantages but we understand it's not for everybody um, right. the response we've gotten so far has been has been really tremendous actually like i've been surprised um, because I'm, I personally am a little bit more of a traditionalist, if you will. Um, but this is something that people have been asking for for a long time. Yeah, yeah. We got to go where the market is for, for sure. Well, yeah. good. And, uh, Mr. Monkey Swag is right. I am deliberately ignoring your questions because it's not questions. <laughs> yeah, but it is now. It is now. So uh, uh, you put three asterisks. That's the Shift A key. And uh, we're going to take as many as we can. We'll keep the answer short. We're kind of going to go through these. Tricky guy, he was on it. So we're going to, he's his first one. Tricky guy, what do you think the gold money bullion bank concept, are they trustworthy? Mm, I, d I don't know. I haven't looked into like their their balance sheet or anything like that. I know that that um, I think that Shift Gold and them split. Am I right? Maybe, maybe help me out here. Yeah, I'm not sure they, either. They were together, they split. So, um, I don't, I don't know enough about it. Yeah, because this thing's with Dylan Gage that you have. All right, Mr. Monkey Swag, many years ago, I remember Provident used to sell very rare coins like 1903 Jefferson Gold Dollar. Nowadays, you only sell common day pre-33 gold. Reasons for no longer carrying rarities. Do you want it? That's the question. Because when we've offered it in the past, I'll, I'll tell you, you know, to get the nice pictures. Yeah. Get, um, 
to get the product description in there, like all that kind of stuff. It's, it's hard to offer that efficiently to where, you know, and source it where we can actually make money on the stuff. Right. And so that's, I, that, that's a tough thing. It's something that, I mean, if you're talking to me personally, I would love, love, love to do it. Like I, I love Morgan dollars, not, yeah. a huge, not that huge fan of peace dollars. My favorite series is standing Liberty quarters. I think there's some awesome, uh, you can put together an awesome collection and oh, yeah. You know, my goal is is to get that to make that happen. Right. Uh, we we do have a bunch of that kind of inventory. Um, we have a bunch of kind of one off, really rare stuff. We just have to figure out a way to to get it on the site at scale to where you know it, it makes sense. So we we thought of a bunch of different ways of doing that, like uh, doing something like this YouTube live and kind of auctioning stuff. Right. You know, we're just we're just throwing up stuff. Um, uh, just I we're, we don't we don't have the answer yet. We want to, um, but you know, this is, this is a, a business. Yeah. So we have to be able to do it efficiently. Cool. All right. A lot of people have, have had their questions copied and pasted. So we're going to go through really quick. Yeah. The, saturation yeah. of the silver coin market, 143 Druid says the saturation of the silver coin market is dominated by limited minage or competition from silver rounds, which have, which of the two has faltered in most of the 2018 specifically mint country design. Wow. Ooh, okay. So I think I understand. I think I get that. It was kind of a long question, but I think uh, referencing the fact that there are so many different issues out there now, right. um, one one coin that I'm a huge, huge fan of that continually seems to have have uh, underperformed would be like the Britannia. Okay, right. I love, I love the Britannia coin. If you've ever, if you haven't held the Britannia coin, just go, just go buy one. Like. The, the guy, they put a lot of work into this coin and yeah. I really like it. The presentation's awesome. They've, they have listened to the market. You know, they used to be nine, five, eight, or, you know, I, I'm trying to think of the purity nine, eight, five, nine, five, eight. I can't remember. Nine, that. Five, eight, yeah. yeah. Nine, five, eight. Now they're triple nine. They're one ounce. They come in tubes. No longer the, I mean, they've done everything right. Yeah. They, they just, they, they don't sell as good. And so, um, Oh, the, I will tell you the stuff that's been strong silver Eagles. Always strong, always number one. Uh, silver maples have been big, so we're we're specifically talking silver. Uh, Those are staple bullion stacking coins. Yeah, or but one that's been a surprise, and on the positive side is obviously Queen's Beast. There's so much stuff out there with the Queen's Beast, and they are done well. Right. right? Yeah. So, like you, you can't knock that product. The they do they do everything right on that stuff. Um, Perth has suffered a, a tiny bit. Okay, it's dropped off a tiny bit. I still think that they're putting out really good stuff. I like that it comes in capsules, but I mean, let's be honest, you, you guys are paying for that. Yeah. You know, yeah. Vintage type stuff. Um, yeah. So hopefully I answered that right. Yeah, that's cool. Um, here's an important question from Silver Wolverine. Thanks for taking the time to do this. When buying silver coins and rounds, we hate milk spots. Yeah, that's for sure. Does Provident look silver coins over for quality and reject any back to the mints? We do our, we do the best we can on that. So if you're if you're buying a full roll, most people prefer that we don't open the rolls. So we we do we don't open rolls. We tape them. I mean, even if the rolls don't have tamp or evident, we won't open them. Right. Um, and and so yeah, there's we what we, I'll I'll give you the nitty gritty. What we do in our in our vault is we have what we call X tubes. And so as the guy as they're going through and pulling stuff out, they'll see a milky one or yeah. one. That some other kind of imperfection, drop it in the X tube, and they just know that that's going back, or it's going in our culls. We've right. built out um, culls in the um, uh, for most of our SKUs, so you know we, we sell a cull silver maple, and right. so all the tube stuff will go in the cull silver maples. But I mean, that's it stinks because we lose money on it, but it's it's we would lose more money if we went back to RCM or anyone else and said, "Hey, these are all milky. Give us our money back." That would that would be just a waste of time. We just right. we'll just sell them as culls and and you know do our best. But honestly, yeah, we we do we do try to pull as much of that stuff as we possibly can out. Um, That's cool. Yeah, yeah, very good. Alpha Boss says, "Do you know anything about the King Author or Legends of Asgard series? It seemed to have disappeared. I don't think you've ever carried those. No, we never carried those. I think they're awesome. Right. Yeah. I mean, as a, as a collector, how can you not appreciate something that? was has been executed so well right, right. I mean, that's that's a pricey series too if i remember correctly um but yeah i need to give, I need to give the mischievous mallard permission to go pee he's been asking me for a while so you do have my permission i bless your peeing opportunity go for it I'll see you. dd prepper says will there be a crypto series from provident will there be zombucks and bu version 
Well, the Zombox were in BU version. Yep, yep, they were in BU version. Um, look out. Okay, so one thing that we've done with Zombox is we we haven't played in the secondary market, and and what that comes from is uh, the fact that we don't we don't want to be accused of like minting more, and all of a sudden right. some more Zombox. We we've stayed away from that. Um, but invariably that stuff comes back to us. And so we, we built a skew that's just, it's a grab bag Zombuck. So yeah. look, look up Black Friday. We have some of those that we've been saving up for last year. We're going to do those, uh, blow those out on Black Friday pretty cheap. And so that's just, I mean, that's a win, win, win. Like, you know, there, there, there are no bad, bad Zombucks really. Um, have you ever thought about uh, a second? Uh, as far as crypto series, you know, we have a really good relationship with Golden State Mint. I know that they've released a uh, crypto series recently and so uh yes bitcoin litecoin i mean yeah i, I don't know which do, do you mean like actual wallet ids on coins i'm not a huge i'm not a fan of that because i think that that introduces uh exposure that you don't that you don't want as a crypto investor right and uh and just as a side note do you think there will ever be a continuation of the zombux like in a like a like a world mint coins or anything yep yep it, you know the one thing you mentioned was the britannia and yeah. honestly Sal, uh like I don't want to offend those guys. If I oh, did, right, right. If their art and zombified it, I, I would hate to offend someone that's like that's like a partner for us. And so that's not that, you know, that's a legit thing that we have to be careful of. Oh, sure, I understand. You know, that makes sense. Um, makes but sense. yeah, we, we, we have some we have some ideas. Uh one I mentioned earlier. So I mean it, I'm I'm always open to ideas, you know, brainstorming. Right. Obviously, you know, uh we, we can't do everything. Um, right. yeah, heck yes. Okay, uh, tricky guy. Are precious metal prices rigged by banksters to protect the dollar? Mm, I, 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 that's a very common theory. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there are some big moves. Yeah. There are some big spikes. I mean, if if you're paying attention in the last two yeah. weeks, you well, see always, crazy action that doesn't doesn't make a lot of sense. I believe, and I know I've mentioned this on my channel. I believe that mostly the natural market forces are at play. Um, with there's some manipulation, but I don't think it's bigger than the natural market forces. Dust, uh, oh, Mr. Vegeta asked if you have if you have any preferences. Mr. Vegeta has a calendar every year. Does a great job photographing coins, and uh, if you have a preference for a Provident Metals round to be included on the Mr. V 2019 calendar? Oh man, that's a good question. He does a really uh, good job with his calendars, by the really? way. Really, I've never I've never heard of that, man. Yeah. Mr. Vegeta, he also does great deals and actually promotes a lot of uh, a lot of stuff, a lot of deals that you have on on for Provident Metals too. Yeah, awesome. Uh, yeah, I mean, um, the 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 ones the ones that I like that we're that we're doing. I mean, obviously, I love the dragons. That's going to be the what I'm, you know, going to talk about and pay attention to. I mean, I have it up. I have it all up here. Yeah. Uh, but also, one thing that we did kind of cool. We missed the year of the dog. We've always done a private mint. Um, oh yeah. Uh, this year, instead of doing a year of the pig, we figured it's gonna be so much year of the pig stuff. We're from Texas, right? If you've been to Texas, you know we have pigs. Yeah, <laughs> we have pigs, a lot of pigs, and so we did a year of the boar. We made them look it's, tough, mean, and so. absolutely awesome. I love that design. That's cool. Yeah, uh, I think, let's yeah. see here. Dusty Rhodes, Jake. I should know this, but is your business on the list of APs at the U.S. Mint? No, Provident is not an AP. Um, there, there, you, you can Google it and see like what the requirements are. I mean, it's, it's, it's significant, uh, balance sheet cash. You know, we, we've always tried to run Provident much leaner, uh, but you know, we, we have great relationships with APs. So, um, I think, I think now there are 12, 13 APs, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, thank you. All right. Centurion Silver. 10 ounce bar for Aztec series or display box possibly? Uh, yes. Uh, if, if you're saying Aztec series, I'm assuming that you're talking about dragons. We have right. two Aztec products. We have the Aztec calendar with uh, Guatemoc on the on, on one side and the Aztec calendar on the other yeah. and the Aztec dragon. Yeah, um, I did I did show this in a different um, in a, a different uh, different video that we did, but this is the box that I'm working on for the dragons. It's 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 pretty straightforward, but it's a nice sturdy box, like, I like more compact. Um, and so you know, you can see that there's there's plenty of space to put, you know, dragon rounds in in capsules. The dragons are going to be six, so you you know, if you're collecting, I, we're not going to make a a box that's big enough to fit all twelve. And I know that you know some people are not going to be happy with that, but um, just just the way it works out, this structure of box is something that's really going to work for us. Um, 
And so that, yeah, this is what we're working on. It's going to be full color. It's not going to be this black color. This is just a prototype that they slapped together to say, Hey, structurally, does this look good? We're considering, um, rather than having the slide, having, uh, the, the flap open up and essentially create an easel. So it'll sit at an angle like this where you okay. can have it on the desk or something like that. And probably, then that's probably the way that we're going to head, uh, packaging is it's, I, I much prefer making rounds to making packaging and uh, that's, that's nothing against our vendor or anything like that, but it's a lot of work and testing oh. and, type and just, we know, we know bullion, you know, we know, right. we know yeah. a lot easier than we know their world. No, and, I understand. Yeah. and I think we answered Slacker Stacker's question of how many in the world of dragon series six. Yes. And, yep. And uh, he, he loves profit and metals by the way, and buys from you all the time. Silver Mana says, are our, 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 our are our addresses and purchases safe from government eyes? Anonymity is very important. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I mean, there's, there's no, there are no requirements for us to provide any of that information. Right. For the government. And Terry asked a question you already answered. Is silver manipulated? I like to manipulate my silver, Terry. Look at that, Terry. Oh, I'm manipulating it. Manipulate, manipulate. Hey, uh, uh, you got another question? Uh, well, Silver Leo bets that you're wearing khakis. But that wasn't a question. No, it's casual Friday, man. You come casual in. Friday, Friday. Friday. I'll show you. I'm wearing jeans. Nice. <laughs> sweet. Nice. All right. There you go. Casual um, Friday is, is a big thing. It's something that I, I kind of count the days down to. And believe me, that's 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 definitely the first time that I've heard. Yeah. You know, am I wearing khakis? And I, by the way, I got I got to mention, you know, it's something you might want to consider as far as testing the silver and gold, I have this thing here called the CCT coin slide. And it's made by cyber curtain twitcher here on YouTube. And uh, it's kind of hard to see here because I've got the camera too close to it. If I move that camera, I might lose signal again, but you can slide silver coins down this thing. And uh, it has new dimming yeah, the diameter. Is that right? Well, no, it, what it does is it, uh, it, it, it slides down. And because of the fixed angle of the slide, uh, silver coins are going to go at a, at a specific rate of speed, whereas uh, um, clan coins will go slide much faster. Mm -hmm. But it's called the CCT coin slide. It's a pretty neat, pretty neat. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you're testing the magnetism. Is that right? Right, right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. Familiar. Oh, yeah, yeah. More questions here. Let's see here. Um, uh, let's see here. Do, 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 do. Mm. Yankee Stacking asks, how popular are your silver at spot deals? Do you expect to continue it? Uh, would you ever expand the deal? And what have you seen from it from your competitors? A lot of, a lot of people are doing this spot deals. Yeah. 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 That's, it's, it's just something, something that we started back in July uh, doing the deal at spot. Uh, and, and the main thing is like, I, I'm, I'm surprised how many people have heard about us or visited the website who have never transacted with us. And so the, the goal, the goal in that is to, um, is to get them through our checkout, get them familiar with us, help them understand what it's like. You know, we're hoping that we're the fir their first touch to precious metals. If, if we're not, you know, get, give us a shot. That's what we're, that's what we're asking. And so, yeah, we, we lose money on every single one of those that goes out the door. Wow. That's why we manually review them to make sure people aren't doubling it. Doubling right. it. Right. <laughs> deals because we just want to get silver in your hands and show you hey we're you know there's a lot of there there are a lot of issues with trust in this industry and so we want people to understand like look you're you're getting what you pay for there's right. no no shenanigans going on get the silver in your hands and so like i don't know what it is but silver silver can create like that emotional connection i don't know i mean maybe i'm too romantic about this stuff but i love holding silver yeah <laughs> I'm much more into silver personally. Um, yeah. Oh, that reminds me. I, I brought something for show and tell. Oh, little, cool. All right, let's take a look at it. A little bit of silver for show and tell. <laughs> and guys, we're probably not going to get to all your questions. We'll try our best. I'm going, I'm going in order here. Look at that. Whoa, it's a 10 kilo. You're the tiger. Wow. You guys can a hunk of silver. Look this up and see how many there are. But I think it's I think it's 200 or less. I mean, that's wow. a great, and that's a capsule. I mean, my arms are shaking. This thing's heavy, you know? Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. <laughs> that is awesome. Wow. I don't like this side as much, but I have to show it. So. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Look at this, is, this is $300. Wow. Out. Wow. Amazing. That is so cool. Wow. Now, is that for sale on your website? They come in a big wood crate. 
uh, with a certificate and all that kind of fun packing and everything. Right. That's a cool thing. We should probably do an unboxing video or something like that. Yeah, that, cool. that, 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 that's awesome. That's awesome. And, and truly unique, or like really limited. I, you know, I oh, thought yeah. the number is 200 or less. It really is. It really is. Colonic Stacker asks, Jake, can you comment on a relative size of Provident versus Atmex? One thing I like about them is that I have a feeling for their large size. Yeah, we're we're definitely not Atmex. Um, I I would guess that we're it's somewhere in the neighborhood of four or five X, maybe. Right. I mean, that's just that's just ballpark. Um, we we try and we try and pace ourselves um, through whatever data that we can collect to see how big we are versus you know as many people as we care about in the industry. So, right. By the way, yeah. then like you know they they. I think their SKU count is something like 15,000. Any right. any given point in time you come to Provident, you're looking up at 1,000 or less. Right, you know, right. That's by design. You know, sure. we, we have we have tremendous backing now. And so um, we have the ability to carry a jillion SKUs if we want. It just doesn't make sense for us. Right, I understand. Yeah, definitely. Thanks, TransLogic, for that uh, super chat. Let's see here. Okay. Uh, Mr. Monkey Swag then asked another question here. I'm trying to think here. Um, do you custom order Royal Canadian Mint uh, to produce your own exclusive mint privy maples? I know you custom order other series like the Mammoth Coins. Yep, yep. We 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 did uh, a number of privies. Um, I mean, privies kind of have a bad rap right now. People people are, hate on privies constantly. Um, we you know we did the uh, we did the World War One tank privy, which again that, to me that was like a, a nod to uh, veterans and you know their contribution. Right, Canada is very uh, particular about what they allow. You right. know, um, I had floated us doing uh, a Captain Kirk. You know, he's from Toronto. Uh, right, William Shatner. William Shatner's from Toronto, right. so, and it was the fiftieth anniversary of Star Trek. I proposed that to them. They shot it down. I think pro more for the licensing. Um, you know, I wanted a USS Enterprise, something like that. I love science fiction. So, yeah. Uh, so I, I floated that to them. Um, I'm trying to think what else we floated. It's been a few years. We haven't done a privy in years now. I and have I, an idea, Jake. Here's an idea for you. this. This will definitely go for an, okay. outhouse, an outhouse privy. Okay. I'm writing it down. <laughs> because it's a privy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> privy. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. pun intended. There you go. I like yeah. that. Well, <laughs> yeah. Speaking of military, Chiefly chief, chiefly chieftain, who always complains in my intro is too loud. He says, "Why can't they accept a copy of my military ID for military discount, or should I say, low price?" I received an email stating that they wanted a certified copy of my DD two fourteen, certified by who? Mm, I'm not sure. I, I that's that's more of a technical question about um, uh, about uh, getting approved for the veteran program and our customer service department handles that. So okay, that's I, mean, cool. I, I, can, I can direct you there or, you know, maybe, maybe afterwards you could um, uh, put us in touch. Uh, I'm not quite sure the, the specifics of that. I, and I apologize. Yeah, no, no worries. I mean, the Wolfman Sachs at, uh, says on your website, I noticed the 10 ounce four horseman bar photo is missing a lot of detail. Doesn't do the awesome design justice. Thank you. Got Think you guys can re-upload the image to capture the awesome detail? Yeah, we could. We 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 try. I mean, it's 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 hard uh, if when you're dealing with 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 uh, the light source like that, you, you want the silver to come out brilliant, but you don't want to wash it out. And right. so, I mean, it, it's a it's a fine line. I mean, there, I know I've seen some some of the guys on on YouTube here, and their photography is like incredible. Like, I I want to contract some of these guys out. <laughs> Talk to Mr. Vegeta. He's the one that does a calendar. He 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 could probably. Yeah, yeah. I can't believe I haven't seen his stuff. Um, I think there's this guy, uh, Mr. M N M N. Yeah, Mr. M N M nine eleven. Yeah, he yeah. does a great That's video great. job. I, I, I like watching his videos. So um, Donald in New Mexico, new privateer rounds possibly. Mm, I don't know anything about privateer. Privateer is. I think, I mean, it's, it's an elemental product. I don't know if they're producing anything anymore. You know, we don't, uh, we don't buy anything from elemental anymore. Right. Any more Texas rounds in the future from Republic of Chad? Okay. Texas from Texas Republic of Chad. Is, that, is that the name or the, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's awesome. Um, that is, you know, we, we have the Texas round. We did the uh, uh, British trade dollar, and then there's the Aztec calendar. I kind of think of those as a series, and to in, in my mind, it's like a it's like a 
vintage tribute series, if you will. Right. So the um, very well done, I think. Yeah. I don't, yeah, I mean they're incredible. I don't get uh, I don't get a lot of say on those, but one one that I'm uh, that I am politicking for is the Oregon Trail. I think oh, that, man, if, if we did the Oregon Trail Kamem, I just love the art on it. It has the covered wagon on one side, the the chief. Uh, in with the headdress on the other side pointing, I, it's it's one of my favorite actual coins, and so to see that on a silver round would be awesome. So yeah, I want that one. I don't know about any other uh, Texas themed stuff. Uh, guys, I tell you what, viewers, if we can limit it now to just one question per person, if you've asked a couple questions, hold off because I'm still way up in the in the line. I'm trying to get to as many as possible. Hey, Sal, uh, how many how many people are, are watching right now? I see a ton of ton of action in the chat here. 170. Yeah. Oh. Crazy. Yeah. Um Danny Lopez, will will you at Provident Metals ever release a Wild West series? You kind of have done that with the prospector, sort of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, so we have the prospector, we have uh the second one is the gunslinger, and then the Pony Express. I'll be honest, they've they've underperformed for us. These the, this series has underperformed for us. So uh if it doesn't get bought, we 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 don't we don't continue to make them. So, um, but yes, I mean, we're, we're, we're doing that right now. The art's cool. Um, I have a Pony Express on my desk. Cool. Yeah. Pony Express round. And I'm sure this camera is not going to do it justice. Um, the same guy that did the, dr the first dragon round did the Pony Express round and uh, right. it's okay. Not a yeah. bad one. But that's that's Don Everhart did that. He did oh, this. Nice. Yeah. That's the US. And then on the, you have the common reverse. Yep. Which does not have a little kitty on it, just a little dog. Yeah. yeah. The, the sleepy, sleepy Wild West town. Yeah. My, I, this is this is like a $15 webcam, so it's uh, probably not doing great. If, if you hold your hand behind the round when you're showing them, it should bring it into focus. Yeah. Okay. See if I can do that. Tell me where I'm at. You have to hold your whole hand in front of the, still focusing. Yeah, there you go. Hopefully it'll come into focus here. Let's see. Not working yet. Pull them back just a hair. <laughs> um, that's all right. That's okay. Anyway, but uh, yeah. You need, you need a tip on upgrading my my camera. No worries. Redneck Stacker asked Jake, "Do you guys provide free shipping to Canada over a certain amount? If not, could that be set up?" Mm, no, shipping to Canada is crazy expensive. We yeah. we had, we had a couple of um, we had a couple of orders like had to get dropped off by airplane in the like like yeah. you were you know some some guy camped by the side of a of a glacial lake or something we had and it was like 280 dollars to ship you know a, a, a three pound package or something incredible like that and so canada's tough man yeah. it's, it's really it's really tough getting stuff up there i think we might have a solution with the depository up there where we can ship stuff direct from the depository to canadian residents and right. that'll be something that we're going to be exploring but then the the issue with that is that the inventory available or like the the variety of SKUs is much much less right uh wolfman sex will we ever see the 10 ounce prospector bar again that would be cool yeah. I, would, I think so i think we will um slacker stacker asked does provident have any kind of deal for pours to buy spotted silver damage rounds for melt that's a good question mm -hmm. no we we do sell shot that's that's the answer. We we have a bunch of um, a bunch of like hobbyists or 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 people that run you know a, a side hustle if you will, right? Where they're making poured silver um, and we sell them silver shot or silver grain, and that's um, that's about as cheap as it gets unless we're doing some kind of at spot promotional price. Um, but all, you know all that silver comes from the Royal Canadian Mint. That's where we source our shot, uh, both silver and gold. So. Kendall Kid, free samples for all in the live stream. Thanks. It wasn't a question; it was a demand. He demands it from you. <laughs> yeah, you're paying. <laughs> oh man, I'm off the hook. All right, let's see. Okay, moving in down here. Okay, Elliot Finesse, Jake, do your outgoing packages have to be have the customer's phone number printed on the shipping label? Mm, not all of them. Uh, I think you. I think UPS. UPS requires that. I mean, these are these are in the weeds ops questions. Uh, honestly, I'm not. I'm no, not. And, and actually, some people have said hey, we should change the provident metal bearings to something else. We can do that. Maybe yeah. we could call. Maybe you could call it provident kitty litter supplies. <laughs> <laughs> provident <laughs> stuff you don't want to steal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you go. There you go. All right. Let's see. Okay. Um, 
Uh, let's see here. Moving down. Okay. Shoot, I'm trying to get as much in here I can. Let me see here. Hey, monkey, monkey swag. We did, uh, we we did say that. Uh, I did say earlier that I'm I'm in the same camp as you, man. I want that Oregon Trail half to see yeah. it around. So let's we're gonna make that happen. Silver Surfer, any plans to bring some BU random year Morgans pre 21? That is. Hmm. I mean, we, we have a skew for that. They're BUs, but they're they're not specific dates or anything like that. Right, okay. We talked about it earlier where we were talking about bringing some rare coins. You know, if if, there, if we do, if we are able to bring rare coins back, they're probably, I would say they're most likely going to be all certified. Right. Uh, I don't want to be in the position, you know, when it's a certified coin, we can, each each of those coins has an individual serial number. Yep. That we say we shipped you this serial number, and when it comes to returns, I mean, there's a there's a lot of fraud in this industry. You know, there are a lot of people. Oh, sure. are yeah. Over, we might send you some rare date, and you get it in the mail and say, "Hey, this wasn't what you sent," even though it was. I mean, I I've, I've literally I have received toenail clippings in a return package from a customer who said that that's what I sent them. I mean, wow. So, you know, we pack everything under megapixel camera, so we right. can. See date on all the coins we send out right um you know we we cover ourselves and that's been that's been through trial and error like right. <laughs> we, right. we suffered to get to this point and so yeah. we do our best to well to thanks thanks for answering that and by the way thanks eric for the super chat it certainly helps a lot now here's one from tricky guy but i think this is a great question he's asked a couple but given private profit of metals present momentum where is the company in 10 years Oh man, that's a good. I don't. I don't know. I mean, uh, I the the thing that we've always tried to do is approach uh, approach the the bullion market and and ask what we would like to see out of the market. And yeah, I, like I said before, we've we've missed in the we've missed in the past. Um, we've hit home runs in the past when it comes to serving the market. Uh, you know, we have we have tremendous backing right now. Um, and so I, I don't anticipate that changing. And so, I mean, the, even I feel like we're overperforming for the market. You know, I know that there are a lot of bullion dealers that are, that are suffering out there and I feel like we're doing a great job. Yeah. So I, I plan on, I plan on being in this for, for a, a long time. I mean, I'm not, I'm not 40 yet and I still got to right. go. So exactly. I, love this company. I love this brand. It's, it's, you know, try to kind of get my DNA in, in this. Very good brand and and, and uh, Keith, Keith, and your your question was answered you have to you have to rewind back to hear it uh chuck and plata says any more steampunks coming any steampunk? more? um i think he's talking about the oh, um steampunk steampunk sorry yeah. um i don't know that's a uh, that was a licensed series from osborne mint you know i don't know if you guys know about osborne mint they're the oldest currently operating uh private mint in the U.S., out of Attleboro, Massachusetts, right? Mm, no, I don't think so. They're out of Cincinnati. So okay, okay, all right. I don't know who's out of Massachusetts, but Os Osborne's out of Cincinnati. Oh, that's Roger Williams men. I'm sorry, that's Roger yeah. Williams men. I thought they were the oldest. Okay, so yeah. they're, they're starting to do some different stuff with limited series. You know, we we there's again that's something that we took a risk on. Those are crazy high premium because you have the licensing fee plus the production fee so you know when they antique stuff it's all antique when they to get that antique finish it's all done by hand which means it drives up the cost to produce it which means we have to sell it for more and it turns some people off so the art's cool um you know it, it's just a matter of whether it sells or not i know that we did have to end up you know kind of liquidating some of those below cost just to just to be done with that that angels and demons series uh, but it, it was a fun series. I mean, it, it did well. Right, right. Cool. Um, well, guys, um, do, we're going to continue to take a couple more questions here. But again, reminder, ask, put three asterisks in front of them and, um, and, uh, and try to, if, and let's give some people who haven't asked a question a chance to ask. Funktad for Selly says, are you going to start to charge sales tax with the new law that's coming? Great question, Funktad. Yes. Yes, we will. Yeah. It's in development right now, so right. we're going to have to do it. Yeah, um, you know what? One of one of the things that I think people uh, it's it's going to become more uh, acceptable. You know, we we're working on a, a partnership with the uh, Texas Depository, um, uh, and actually, it's actually IDS Texas. There are a couple different depositories in Texas. The IDS of Texas. I think that um, people who are you know really concerned with that sales tax are going to be able to store their stuff. In, in IDS Texas, which is uh, just a few minutes from our office here, 
<laughs> These guys got to come take this coin back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. so I got to get it back to them. All Thank right. You. Appreciate yeah. it. Um, but yeah, uh, when it comes when it comes to the sales tax, I think storage is a good option for people who are looking to um, who, are, who are looking to keep significant amounts of bullion, avoid the sales tax. You just keep it in Texas. Right. Yeah. It's based on shipping destinations. So. Right. Right. And Shurian Silver has a great question. Has Provident considered a point system for frequent buyers to accumulate it towards future purchases? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we have. Cool. We have. Uh, there, there's an, there's an upgrade coming uh, to our, uh, to our website. Uh, look for that. Man, I, I hope it's, I hope it's early or I hope it's in the first half of 2019. Um, where that that's going to be a part of it. Nice, cool. Mischievous Mallard apologizes for sending you toenail clippings. Oh, geez. All I right. <laughs> I want to know where you live. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, uh, uh, let me see. Okay, uh, where is it? Where are we at here? Um, I got. Uh, do you offer the Ukrainian mint archangels? Nope. Nope. No. Normer man. And really, really, if, if there's stuff that we don't offer, it's because we haven't received emails from, you know, we, we, we know for the most part what we're going to be offered and, you know, something will kind of ring true with us and be like, I like that product. Let's bring it on board. Right. Uh, just to give you an example, some of the people that we're going to be, uh, we had an email conversation earlier this week was Intaglio, Intaglio Mint. Intaglio Mint. Yes. I, I always want to pronounce that G. Intaglio Mint, they're out of they're out of Denver now. Um, we're going to be carrying some of their products shortly. So look for that. That's already on the promotional calendar to launch their stuff. Um, and that was, that was a response to people saying, Hey, you're going to carry this stuff. And I, you know, I reached out to them on LinkedIn and, uh, yeah, there you go. Right on, man. Great stuff, man. I love their work. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. And, and the, the thing is, you know, <clears throat> I feel this kind of affinity to those guys because you can tell that they know coins. Yeah, and stuff. They they've held mercury dimes in their hands, or right. you know, the saint that just came out is just gorgeous. I don't know. I have the samples around here somewhere, but yeah, I mean their 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 work is just awesome, and they I mean they're they by all accounts they seem like really really great guys. Yeah, there's the ten Indian. That's a good one too. Yeah, pretty well. I'm excited about, I'm excited about carrying their stuff, and again, it's higher premium. It's not for everybody, right? Um, but. It, it is what it is. I mean, you got to appreciate the effort and the, the craftsmanship that goes into this stuff. Uh, let's see. Oh, st uh, stack. Uh, let me see. Okay. Um, do, 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 um, stack and silver. Yes. Yes. We will accept a million dollar order and I will ship it free. Nice. Uh, nice. I don't know, to, to the States. Let's say to the States. In the States. There you go. Um, a tricky guy. How much trouble will your company say you caused by being too honest in this interview? Uh, I don't know. I'm not worried about it. <laughs> what did I? What did I say? Now you got me nervous. Whoever said that? Now I'm nervous. Oh boy. Security came for the 10K medallion. Yeah, pretty dope. Yeah, that was that was security. <laughs> it was security. And the 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 vault so, so, so G is silent in, in intaglio. It's not intaglio. It's intaglio. I think. So. I believe so. Yeah. I think that's how we pronounce it. Right. I don't know. I, I I don't know. But anyways, well, cool. Google, put it in the Google machine and see how it see what it spits out. Yeah. But the, um, let me see. Not Texas, mischievous mallard. Not Texas. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Not Texas. They have their own power grid, by the way. Yeah, what state will fall when it hits the fan? Not Texas. Okay. Next question. Right. I like this. This is fun. Uh. You do that. I'm going to look up in Taglio. I'm too curious. Yeah, there you go. Learn right. something every day. Hopefully, it, hey, I learn. I learn way more. You pay. You pay way more attention to this stuff than I do when it comes to all these new releases and craziness. So, um, Intaglio. What was it? Intaglio. Intaglio. No, I was right. it's sort of silent. That is, man. I learned something new. That's pretty is cool. That, is that French or something? I mean, I, I would say I it's, it's Italian. I think it's Italian. By the way, I've got to show you something here. This has always perplexed me. I've cleared my browser. Let me show you this, Jake. You're going to, this is breaking news now on the Salivate Metal channel here. Let me show you. Uh, this is my, uh, just on my um, home for this browser. This is what comes up. What? Cleared my cache and everything. There's some talking to do to somebody. What? What's that? 
I got, we have some talking to do, do to somebody. Does it do that every time? It's on this browser. Now, if I open up another browser, it's fine. Now, if I go to the new arrivals. Is it, a, uh, is, it, is it a browser that needs to be updated or something? No, or? it's completely up to date. I've cleared my cache. I've cleared my cookies. I've. Well, which, I've, which one, what browser is it? Uh, Firefox. Okay. That might be it. I don't know. It's weird. I, anyway, I, 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 but anyways, anyways. All right. Well, cool. I'm, sorry, I'm, sorry, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry. I said that's our attempt to get you to switch to Chrome. There it is. That's right. That's exactly right. No, I've got I've one on Chrome. I've got this one on Chrome. All right, let's see. Okay, fourth question. Terribly loyal. See, yeah. you, have, you're, you have a YouTube channel. <laughs> you need to be loyal to Google, man. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. That's right. Well, I, I've got Chrome. This this interview is being conducted via Chrome. Google yeah. Chrome. Uh, let's see here. Okay. Uh, what is, I've got like three or four different browsers. Anyways, what is your view of the future of numismatics and stacking? Oh man. Okay. So, um, I really, I really like this question, which is why I'm stalling to think of a good answer. Um, but when, when it comes to numismatics, you know, I, like I said, I've been around this my whole adult life dealing with numismatics, seeing all these crazy coins come across. I've gone, I've, I've, I've been to, uh, hundreds of coin shows. And so if you've never been to a coin show, definitely go to a coin show. Even oh, yeah. to house, like, you know, instead of going to the park for a walk or taking your dog out on a walk, whatever it is, um, don't go hunting or camping, go to a coin show once at least just to see what it's about. Don't go late on Saturday, go right. as early or as early in the show as you can. If you can take a day of work off, go Friday because a lot of the action is done. Um, but you, if you just look at the demographic, there's, there's, there's going to be, uh, uh, I, I feel that numismatics and legit numismatics are going more towards, let's say, the investment fund model versus right. you know, collectors. Like these are people who are going to be approaching these much like I, I, I kind of think of, you know, comic books and some of these other collectibles out there where, you know, the first issue of this is worth 8,500. And the, yeah, there might be a few guys that own that own these or guys or gals that own these that, um, that really enjoy enjoy them, and they they really like the art. And then there's a bunch of other people that are doing it to to uh, to invest and make a bunch of money on. Right. You know, I I just I'm a little bit concerned um, as as these collectors pass on. Right. What, what happens to these? I'm worried about. I'm worried about. Um, you know, I've seen it a million times. People getting ripped off in the coin industry. Like, I and I feel like there's a big vacuum there. There's a big opportunity for. Um, for someone to come in and like legitimately help people out. You know, there are a lot of coin dealers out there that do, that do a good, honest business. Um, and I mean, many of them, I consider my, my, my friends in the coin industry. Um, but when it, when it comes to numismatics, like you really have to know your stuff. You, yeah. If, if you're past this stuff down, you're, you're definitely at risk. Like you need to educate yourself or just sit on the stuff. Right. Right. Not I mean, good advice. Good advice. Need to have have all the inventory tied up. So, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm concerned. About, let's just say this. I'm I'm concerned about it. Uh, I hope that you know maybe there's some technology that that can be developed that will um, support uh, this or the market going forward. I I you know I I teach the coin collecting merit badge for for the Boy Scouts, um, right. and so you know like that's that's I see that as like my responsibility as someone who really enjoys coins. Right. To, to like help foster this young generation. People come okay. to the table. I'm, if you come to our table at a coin show, you're going to get a free copper round. Like that's just, no one's about it. I'm saying if you're, if you're a youth, right. right. Exactly. You get a free copper round because I mean, if that's the one thing that 20 years down the road sparks a memory for, for someone to get into coins or bullion or anything, I, I don't, it doesn't, you don't need to shop at Provident. It, it's just, it helps the hobby as a whole. It helps the industry as a whole. Um, we, we want, you know, we want it to be a safe place for people, a place where people can come and enjoy themselves and, and learn and, 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 you know, invest, you know? Right. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. That's exactly right. Seduced by silver says, thank you for taking the time to speak with us, Provident metals. And she says, fantastic interview. Well, thanks seduced. And, and Eric um, uh, says thoughts on super high premium releases like the silver swan. You sort of touched on that in a previous question. Yeah, um, I, I think some of that's manufactured. Um, right. I, I'm I'm not a huge fan of the, of those kinds of releases. Uh, Slacker Stacker says, "At what point do you notify the RS about an order if you do?" 
We're not required to. Right. Cool. All right. One CJS for you says, what is your personal PM stack size? Come on, man. <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, trust and me. You don't have to answer these. You don't have to answer these, by the way. It's That's kind no, of. No, no. No, the, the, the answer to that is I like silver. There you, you know, go. I, I like silver more than gold. Um, I, I mean, I drink my own Kool-Aid. I, I have Zombux. I have, uh, I was not a fan of the, the American Wildlife Series, but I have the Four Horsemen. Right. Um, th those, those types of things. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I enjoy that kind of stuff for sure. Uh, let's see. Uh, Elliot Finesse has an idea for a silver round. That would be a winner. Perhaps the biggest selling round of all time. How can I submit this to you? Hmm. Uh, I've heard that a bunch of times before. So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you can, you can, uh, you can email us. Um, if you go on, if you go on our website, I think the email is like info at Provident Metals. You can email stuff there. If you know the, the the thing you have to realize is that we get pitched we get pitched product all day long, right? All day, every day. So I mean, you you have to have your ducks in a row. Yeah. Uh, if, if you're coming with a pitch product, I understand yeah, that you have, you have, have your ducks in a row. Yeah, there you go. Uh, I, I I use that. My kids cringe. Like that's my dad. Uh, that's my dad talk. Get your ducks in a row. Yeah. Chris Garner says, can I order coins to be in capsules before ship? So if a coin doesn't originally come in a capsule, if he orders a capsule with it, do you guys put them in capsules before they ship? No, no we, we, we don't. And the reason is because there's no like explicit thing on the, on the website to, for a customer to request that it's, right. we understand that it's a gap and it will be addressed. Uh, like I said, hopefully in the first half of 2019, that's one of the things we're working on. Um, and and so, it, for instance, in the past, if you if you bought ten silver eagles and ten uh, capsules that fit those silver eagles, we would have put them in there. And this is I'm talking years ago, 2010, 2011. I mean, we learned that lesson quick that people get very upset. They think that the silver eagle that they bought was supposed to come in a capsule, and we shorted them ten capsules. Right, right. Yeah. Or they, those capsules were not intended for those silver eagles, right? And so, I mean, we 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 can't we can't judge that. I understand people wanting to. Um, to protect their stuff and capsules are crazy cheap now. I mean, we yeah. sell them, we sell them super cheap. Right. They, they don't, they're not, there's not a lot of weight to them. Right. They don't cost us a lot of, sh a lot to ship so we can sell them really cheap. Here's a, a Terry Ravidu rightfully says that Sal, this guy is smarter than you. Yes. Jake is smart. Uh, <laughs> Talking bullion says, Jake, what is your stacking strategy personally? Okay. I like this question. This is a really good question. And so, the, the way I look at stacking is uh, it, it envision envision you're building a house, right? Yeah, and I, and I, in my mind, I refer to them as pillars. Around here, I try to get that vernacular going. Pillars, ten yeah. ounce bars made by good makers. Okay, that's a pillar product. Like right. you really can't go wrong with a low premium ten ounce silver bar. We're talking silver now. Um, you can't go wrong with silver eagles. And the reason I say that, yeah, there's a, they're a higher premium, but we always bid a lot. Like I've never found a market where people pay less than spot on silver eagles. Right. Um, especially, well, I mean, you go to some pawn shop. Yeah. That guy's going to scalp you or whatever. Um, but if you're, if you're calling us, you know, uh, we're paying a buck, we're paying 80 cents, we're paying, you know, a buck 25, just, it all depends on our inventory levels. So silver eagles, silver maples, uh, 10 ounce silver bars, 100 ounce silver bars, if your budget allows, but I would be careful on the makers there. You want, you don't want anything obscure. And <clears throat> the reason I say that is because you know, everyone gets gets all excited about buying product, getting it cheap and stuff. Um, the thing you think you got to watch out for, or you think you have to think about, is your exit, the liquidity. Okay, yeah. is, is this a Johnson Matthew, or is this you know a couple of guys in the mountains in Wyoming making silver bars or something? No offense to anyone who's in the mountains, right? But you you, you get what I'm saying. Like, is this a legit maker? Uh, you know, are there concerns? I I really like the 100 ounce Royal Canadian Mint Silver Bar for a bunch of different reasons. The look, it looks cool. Yeah. It's 100 ounces of silver. They're serialized. You can tell what year they were made. You can verify them. I mean, like that's a great 100 ounce bar. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, so when it come back to my strategy, you get all your pillars. You got your silver eagles, your silver maples, your 10 ounce bars. Um, I would even stay away from one ounce bars as a pillar, uh, just because resale doesn't. It, you don't. You don't quite get the resale or the recognition there, and you pay a little bit up front for them. Um, once you get that stuff, go to town, man. 
Right. Buy your buy your your Zombux or your proof this or your colorize that. Uh, but understand <clears throat> what you're doing when you do that. Like this is not this is your fun money. This is your play. And let's say maybe that that ends up being 10% of your stack. I definitely don't recommend, you know, 90% of your stuff being really obscure onesie twosie because you're going to incur that cost of labor to liquidate that stuff at some point. Right. And the cost is either going to be in your time or the actual bid that you get offered. If you, if you come and you just vomit a bunch of random stuff on somebody, they're going to look at it and say, well, I have to do a bunch of work to sell this stuff. Rather you come to them with a, a nice roll of silver Eagles. That's all buttoned up and ready to go. Boom. That's an easy transaction. You're going to get out of that. Uh, there's no him and and Han. There's there's really no banter that has to go back and forth. It's just easy. So if you have those bases covered, go to town, have fun, uh, be crazy. Believe me, I and I, I'm saying this uh, not just because of my personal preference, because I've been doing this stuff since I was 18, and I've seen so many people make make bad bad decisions. Now, I'm not some kind of like financial advisor or anything. Just my past history says, you know, you go crazy with stuff, you're going to pay for it later. Yep. Yep. Yeah. The only thing I wonder about the the larger bars, I mean, like over ten ounce, is the you know the the fear. Like you've just seen that uh, that um, oh shoot, the show on History Channel. What is the name of that show with uh, with the old man and um, uh, Pawn Stars? With that, they had that big bar and they had to drill down and test it, and make sure. Yeah. There was some fear of that with the with the larger bars, but that yeah. you know, like yeah. you know, ounce bars and things. So. Yeah. And, and I mean, and, and where, where that comes to is, you know, where, where are you getting it? Are you getting it on right. Craigslist? Is it some secondary market? Like the way I look at it is this, look, if, if you're saving 20 bucks on a hundred ounce bar, so let's say it's a, you know, at this point, it's a $1,600 transaction. If you're going and saving 20 bucks to get a hundred ounce bar from some guy that you meet in a right. back alley off of Craigslist. Yep. Pay the twenty bucks. Exactly. Right. Get something where you understand, you know where it came from. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, and just put put your mind at ease. Like if you're not worried, if you're not concerned about that type of transaction, I mean, you got you have bigger problems, right? Silver Wolverine says, "Is Provident Metals subscribed to the Silver Wolverine YouTube channel?" Mm, I I believe so. Oh, okay, cool. They should. I honestly think they we do. Um, I, you know, I, I, uh, I, I try to subscribe to a bunch of these. Silver Wolverine, um, I think a Midwesterner. Let me know if I'm right or wrong. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, the the name sounds really familiar. I've seen some of the I've seen some of the love videos from him, and I think there've been a couple of hate videos. So <laughs> ravenous it's all, it's all feedback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Ravenous Treasure says, has Provident thought about doing a silver or gold monthly subscription box like Investor Crate? Yep. Cool. Yep, that's happening. Nice. All right. Let's see. All right. Um, let's see here. Uh, oh, let's see here. Uh, CCT, we shouted out your coin slides earlier. Jake saw the coin slide, the CCT coin slide. He's the, he's in here right now. It's late. He's in England. Ah, there you go. Uh, okay. All right. Let's see here. I think, you know what? It's, it's late. It's actually, we've gone on for about an hour and a half now. Yep. Almost an hour and a half. Um, do you want to take a couple more questions or we don't want to, we don't want to wear you out here, Jake. Yeah, let's, let's uh, we, we can do a couple more. Um, one thing I want to get in, we, we did something special for the, uh, the people that are on this, um, on the live, we, we threw together a code this afternoon for your people. So we'll, we'll get to that after the couple, after a couple of questions. I don't want people to leave quite yet. Yes. Yeah, stick around folks because there's going to be a special code, uh, a discount code for this live stream. So if you stick around, You'll get that 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 code for a, a special discount on your next order with Provident Metals. Very cool, Mister Monkey Swag says. Will Provident carry Daniel Carr's Moonlight Mint rounds? You know, you know who Daniel Carr is, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know that we'll we'll carry those. It just it hasn't been a topic of discussion, and maybe that maybe that's because they haven't reached. Do you know who produces those? Uh, it's, it's the Moonlight Mint. He actually he's he bought a a. a, a a press from the Denver Mint. He's out in Colorado too. He makes his own pieces. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. You know, we've never we've never dealt directly. Uh, I'm familiar with with some of the product. Yeah. That they put out, but yeah, we we've, we've never been approached by them, as far as I know. I mean, someone may have. All right. Let's see here. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. When I'm looking over here, it's because I got the comments up this way. So, <laughs> oh, I, CCT says that he can send you a slide to try if if you send uh, him a free pin. Okay. 
this is this is vintage right here this oh. is we we used to have black background on the website this is you know back at launch wow so this is vintage that's old logo yeah i i don't i don't like to call stuff outdated it's vintage right there you go and this is uh this is our past iteration here so i'll send you one of each how about that these these pens are awesome like no. I love these pens these pens yeah. you get about a thousand clicks here and then they they start going out on you so yeah. I'll, I'll send you one of each okay well um uh yo uh jake if or cct if you want to um I don't know how he can get in touch with you, but I think you'll like his coin slide. It's really cool. Okay. Yeah, well, I mean, we'll definitely take a look. I mean, really, if, if it helps people out, you know, if it's not obnoxious when it comes to the price or anything like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ikeo Net is here. We haven't seen Ikeo in a while. Thank you for that. Um, Ikeo Net has um, uh, been a member of the community for for quite a while, and he's in here. Very cool. All right. Let's see here. Let's see. Um, do, 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 do. Um, Silver Leo would like to ask Jake about the 10 prospector rounds I got at spot. They were thin on one side and thick on the other. Made, that made the stack looped. That's, oh, you mean when they struck off center, Silver Leo? Yeah, yeah they must They must have been. Yeah. yeah. You know, I noticed that too with, uh, you know, I have I have a stack of the uh, of the HM. Um, what are these? These are the Pony Express that I was showing earlier. And yeah. so that, that's just something. And, and what, the, what that comes from is – we always try and push stuff to the limit like you know we're trying not to do anything halfway and so the relief like uh, I, I don't quote me on this but i think like normal relief for a silver round is six thousandths of an inch right, right. Our relief, like uh the cleopatras those those approach like eighty thousandths of an inch uh, a lot of our one ounce rounds that we like to do are between 12 and fifteen thousand. so at least double the relief of a normal silver round and so uh what happens is they have to strike them multiple times and the, the dies, the, the pressure that's caused on the dies by the metal moving, um, it has to do with where the metal is flowing on the reverse as well as the obverse. And right. so you have to think of this as a two sided thing. It, it happens. And it's something that we always, we're always trying to work with our manufacturers and, and do a better job of. So cool. I, 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 I we addressed it on the, uh, pony express. That was an issue that first came out with a pony express and we did, we did talk to Highland Mint about that. Cool. All right. Very good. Yeah. We love evenly struck coins. The stacking nerd says, why don't you list your low priced items as deals in your eBay stores? They can be hard to find. Yeah. E eBay is a whole nother animal altogether. And so, you know, e it's, it's quite a bit more expensive to sell on eBay in terms of like fees and, and processing. And it's, I mean, it's, it's painful sometimes, honestly. Uh, we we were just new to this relationship with eBay and it's been going really good. Um, but yeah, I mean, as, as far as like, we get a lot of questions about eBay bucks, you know, changing categories so their eBay bucks can qualify. We're very much hemmed in uh, by, by what eBay allows us to do. So this is not the, uh, simply a, a matter of me going into eBay and checking one box and unchecking another like this. We're, we're doing, we're doing what we have to to sell on eBay. And it, I, you know, like I said, it's expensive. And so a lot of that low price stuff we can't do on eBay. I'm, I mean, if it's cheaper on Provident, why wouldn't you buy on Provident unless you're trying to leverage eBay bucks or something like that. Right. Yeah. Okay. Bob Silver, how many ounces of silver does Provident sell per week or month? Mm, I don't know. I mean, I, 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 I know, but I, I, I probably can't say that would, right. that would be getting me in trouble. Yeah. That's <laughs> cool. Right. The Lang P is here great youtube channel very smart guy he says ask jake how provident hedges their inventory against adverse spot we actually talked about that earlier blank um yeah. at the beginning um if you just want to rewind just to save time he did talk about that that was the last question i asked him a good question indeed uh let's see here um um where are we at here uh let's see if you want to ask a question put three asterisks just like this Kiss my asterisks. You know what I mean? Put three of those before the question, and then we'll know. We're going to take a couple more before Jake yeah, has to go. Two, 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 more, and then, two more, and then I'll get the code out, and then uh, okay, and I'll go have a safe weekend. How about that? Stick around for the code, guys. Uh, uh, an actual code that you guys will use specific to this live stream for you viewers. Um, let's see here. Thank you, Silver Seeker. Okay, turning wheels. I love the magnets. Why doesn't Providence send a magnet on every order? I need my magnet. Okay, so we, we had a customer that was 
really like legitimately cursing upset that we didn't include magnets in his order. I'm not saying that you suggest doing that. Um, what happens is, is so sometimes there's there's a lag in the information getting from um, from the uh, from the the shipping department to us here to call up the vendor and say, hey, we need more magnets. So usually, um, usually when we're when we're short on magnets is when we're not uh, we're not shipping them out in every single order. But yeah, I mean, if we have magnets in stock, they're going on every order. I apologize if you didn't get one. Um, you can always contact customer service and say, hey, you missed magnets on a couple of orders. I mean, it's it's kind of one of those things. You know, we did something on uh, Instagram not not too long ago um, where we were. Uh, what was it? We uh, we asked people to shoot a, a picture of their refrigerator with all their magnets on it, and it oh, was yeah. some of the responses that we got. How much I can get this for this on eBay? This has got to be a rare magnet. Look at that! <laughs> yeah, you're the Walker. You're the Walker. Walker, Texas Ranger. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. By the way, I did not miss the comment where Terry said that she was going to manipulate me. Um. Wolfman Sack says, "Do you guys all get along over Provident, and do you go out for beers?" Yeah, um, you know we it's 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 like a family. No, How, do you get along with your family all the time? No, I mean you have you have some <laughs> great times. You have some great times. You have some times where you don't get along. I mean, you know, uh, Joe, the other founder, I've known him since I was twelve, and uh, yeah, we're, I mean we're like brothers. So awesome. envision that kind of relationship. And uh, you got your answer right there. And he's no relation to the elephant man, too, just so people know. Correct. That's right. Uh, let's see. Uh, in, the same, in the same way that I get asked if I'm wearing khakis, he gets that question. <laughs> yeah, <that's right>. exactly. <laughs> Terry Rabideau says, payback will be hard, Sal. That's what she said. Uh, let's see. Okay. Um, we got some office fans here. I yeah. Love, yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I, really, I want to see the, the, new, um, the new film he's coming out with, Steve Carroll. Oh, really? Uh, oh, yeah. It's about his son, his son going through some stuff. It's called Beautiful Boy. Man, that movie looks awesome. I want to see it. Oh, wow. I'll have to check that out. I didn't know. Wow. Look at the trailer. I think you'll be sold. If He's you a talented you actor. Anybody in your life, you'll be sold on that one. It looks nice. awesome. Nice. Cool. All right. Well, very good. Um, um, well, real quick, what's your I'm gonna ask one more question. What's your what's your favorite kind of music? My favorite kind of music? Man, yeah. I, I listen to podcasts now, you know. Yeah. yeah. Gosh, if I if I had to pick a favorite ah, i'm kind of when it comes to music i'm kind of renaissance i definitely have gone more towards country lately oh, man. Um, but I, I definitely like like alternative okay i'll i'll tell you a quick story when i when when my uh first son was like five months old um i was i was he, he was up in the middle of the night i i went out to the couch turned it on if you guys know the, ch the channel palladium or palladia palladia i don't know what it is one of those channels, I don't have it anymore, but a band was on there that I just thought was awesome. It's Alter Bridge. So don't clown on me. I love Alter Bridge. Oh, Alter Bridge uh, yeah. I, I, I love Miles Kennedy. Um, not a huge fan of Creed or whatever, but they're one of my favorites. I do like Red Hot Chili Peppers. Um, I, I like the older U2 stuff. Um, but if, if I'm just like, if I'm just out working or whatever, it's country music or I listen to a lot of podcasts. I'm going to show you some of the stuff I like. Let's see here. Wait a minute here. I'm trying to get it out of here. Find one I might know. This band is awesome. Ice to Earth. Really? Yeah, they're heavy, heavy metal, man. It looks like it. Is, I mean, is that like your intro music or something? I've, I've... No, that's actually my music is the, is the intro music. I did that to avoid copyright crap and stuff. But, uh, yeah, I like heavy metal, as you can guess. But, yeah, good, good band. Good stuff there, but anyways, but yeah, well, very cool. Well, guys, we did. We got to most of we we got to most of your questions, didn't we? We really yeah. did. Hey, uh, let us let us know. I mean, you want you want to do this again? I mean, it's been a lot of fun for me getting the oh, feedback. Sure. Yeah, yeah. The feedback. I, I'd love to do it again at some point. Uh, you know, before too long or whatever. Um, you know, I I just I really appreciate uh, uh, the questions and just it, it's it's really nice seeing. Uh, the questions that people have, like, you know, from the horse's mouth, not filtered through the customer service department or anything like that, like really getting in touch with you guys has been, has been fun. Well, yeah, it'd be an honor. I think it would be great. To, it would be awesome. We'll definitely do it again for sure. And um, we, um, and I want to thank 
again, I want to, and it's got the, by the way, guys stick around because there's going to be a discount code coming very shortly here. And, um, <laughs> And but but I just want to thank Jake definitely, but also my moderators. Thank you to Barb and to Eric for being real troopers there, hang, uh, keeping us straight on the side here. Very cool, you guys definitely. Um, you guys are a hoot. This is good. Okay, uh, do you want the code? Sal? Sure. Yeah. Okay, so uh, the the code is is good until tomorrow at uh, let's say like six o'clock. Oh, let's just say eight o'clock. Tomorrow at eight o'clock, the code expires. So this isn't this isn't good beyond then. But it's it's the code's good for ten bucks off an order two hundred bucks or more. Okay, right. so any sized order um, two hundred dollars and over, you get ten bucks off. And the code, if if you go you go to the cart, the cart flies out from the right of your computer screen. There's a little question mark that says "Have a coupon code." You click that and you plug in Sal sent me and apply that coupon code you'll see that ten dollar off if you if you have less than two hundred dollars in your cart the code's going to say invalid if you get 200 bucks or more you're going to get that 10 bucks off Very so cool. you you guys can can figure out how that's a good deal all we have capital letters. Letters. All capital letters uh it's not it's not case sensitive so it's sal sent me for over two hundred dollars worth, right? Okay, very cool. Sal sent me for. I thought you might say Slurpee Sal or Uncle Sal or something. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's cool. that, that, that's that, perfect. Perfect. that on you. So <laughs> we can talk it out next time if you want me to make to go creative. Yeah, yeah. No, that's awesome. That's cool. Hey, very good. Very nice of you. So there you go, guys. That code is good until what? Uh, eight o'clock tomorrow. Yeah, let's say eight, eight o'clock Central on Central. Saturday. I'll set an alert on my phone to shut it down. Nice. Very cool. All right. Very good. Well, thank you so much, guys. Thanks to all the viewers. Thank you, Jake and uh, Provident Metals. And just so you know, I should have said this at the very beginning, but if other uh, dealers are, are listening to this, um, you know, we can do either a live like this or pre-recorded, but we're, we want to get other dealers to, uh, that are interested in this, uh, in this uh, platform to be able to talk about their their companies and also about what they're personally interested in you know it's very low-key very easy going here we have a good time so if you're interested in that just shoot me an email actually don't shoot me just send me an email i don't want to be shot i really don't at salivate at gmail.com yes indeed all right guys well have a good weekend all right have a good weekend thank you all multitude of gratitude to you all keep your feet on the stars and keep reaching for the ground <laughs>